Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. In this video I'm going to be talking about the books that I read in April. I know this video is a little bit late, I'm really sorry. I know it's like midway through May now but better late than never, um, here we are. <laughs> so in the month of April I did finish five books but I read six. I had one DNF um, but apart from that I had a really good reading month. I gave four of the books five out of five stars so overall I'm pretty happy with the books that I read this month. As you may already know I did also participate in the Magical Readathon so the OWLs and I did pass. I read all three of the books on my OWLs TBR so yes I'm looking forward to carrying on and doing the newts later on in the year. So without further ado I'm just going to jump into sort of rating and reviewing the books that I read this month. This is a spoiler free video so if you haven't read these books please don't worry I will be trying to keep it as spoiler free as possible. The first book that I read in the month of April was A Throne of Swans by Catherine and Elizabeth Core, and I gave this book five out of five stars. This book is a retelling of the Swan Lake and it's a very original retelling. I really enjoyed this story. So this book follows Adarin who is protector of Atratus and this is set in a world where nobles can transform into birds. However, Adarin has not been able to transform since she witnessed the death of her mother. Um, so when her father dies, she inherits the role of protector and travels to the citadel to like prove her worth as well as find out the truth behind her mother's death. This book also has a really nice slow burn romance to it. Um, yeah, it was kind of, I thought originally it was gonna be enemies to lovers, but it's kind of, not quite enemies um like there's still an overall like appreciation for wanting what's best for each other's interests but yes overall i would call this a maybe friends to lovers or kind of just like colleagues to lovers i don't really know what to call it um but it's not quite enemies um but yeah it is a bit of a slow burn um and it was really enjoyable and the overall plot of this book is really original it's really captivating there's a lot of suspense and mystery there's also lots and lots of parts where you just don't know who you can trust and behind all of that there is also an emotional part of the main plot line um which really makes you feel for Adarin she has a lot of personality a lot of um things that have happened in the past that really make you just like relate to her and feel for her um, i really like books like that i really like being able to kind of feel for the main character and even sometimes relate to them on a personal level um but yeah this book just overall five out of five stars it has a lot of depth to it in the character development and the plot development a lot of mystery suspense um, and I would definitely recommend it. The next book that I read in April was With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo and I gave this book four out of five stars. So this book follows Emily who is 17 years old still in school who living with her grandmother and her two-year-old daughter and she has a very strong love for cooking um, and this book just kind of follows her. There isn't necessarily a sort of plot to it like as you would have in a fantasy book but it just sort of you go on a bit of a journey with her about her trying to kind of think about herself for once rather than other people and really having to you know consider what she wants for her future and um, because she's sort of so wrapped up in all of these responsibilities that she has at just 17 years old um so yeah this is a really heartfelt story about you know family and kind of finding yourself and things like that. There is also a very, very adorable romance, which I loved, I really enjoyed it. But yeah, this is another one of those books where I just really felt I grew attached to the main character. Um, Emily has a lot of personality, which shines through in Elizabeth Acevedo's writing style. Um, you really just grow to like, love the voice of Emily in this book. Um, yeah, this book has a lot of personality to it. It really just feels like Emily has really just like picked up a journal and just jotted all of this stuff down, but it has so much personality to it and I really, really enjoyed this book. This was also a fairly quick read as some of the chapters sort of have different focuses. So in the beginning of the book, there was one chapter with a focus on like the story behind Emily's daughter's name, and then another chapter sort of focusing on her grandma, um, and then another chapter about school. So they're kind of like 
diary entries in my opinion which is why I've kind of said it feels like Emily sort of picked up a journal and wrote down her thoughts um but yeah so it was kind of a quick read because some of the chapters were quite short meaning there was like a lot of blank space left on some pages which made me flick through it quicker so yeah I would definitely recommend this book as a contemporary standalone it really captivated me I really enjoyed it and then the next book that I read was Serpent and Dove by Shelby Maherin. I still don't entirely know how to say the author's name, I'm really sorry. Um, but this was a reread for me and I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. Second time in a row I'm going to give it that rating and probably forever I will be giving it that rating. I really really love this book. So this book follows Lou and Reed. Lou is a witch who has run away from her coven and is currently undercover as a common thief. Reed is a witch hunter who is a chasseur working for the church and the archbishop um, and the two end up coming together in these kind of funny unexpected circumstances um, and the two end up being put together into a marriage of convenience. I love the enemies to lovers romance, the like convenient marriage kind of trope. The only thing that I will say in this book, despite giving it five out of five stars, is that the beginning, the first 90 pages or so are quite slow in my opinion, but I understand that those pages are necessary for the world development and the character development and the background development. Um, so yeah I kind of can move past that um, but yeah just keep it in mind if you haven't read this book before just try to power through the first 90 pages or so because it does get better hence why I've given it five out of five stars anyway because just the overall plot of it just has a lot of depth it's really enjoyable um Lou and Reed as main characters really complement each other Lou is quite carefree she's very funny very witty um not very ladylike which is something I really like about her um, and Reed is kind of very you know proper and not necessarily stuck up but he's very passionate about his job as a chasseur. Lou is very good at pulling Reed out of his shell and Reed is very good at kind of crawling under Lou's skin um, and really getting her to open up. Um, so yeah they really complement each other so well as main characters and it just makes the enemies to lovers trope so much better. The sequel to this book, Blood and Honey, is due for release in September, I believe, so I cannot wait to get my hands on that book. Um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend this book as a YA fantasy. So the next book that I read in April was my DNF, so I didn't actually finish this book, and the book was Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo. Um, this book just didn't do it for me. I got 200 pages in, so about halfway through the book, and I just, I decided to put it down. Originally I said I was going to put it on hold and maybe come back to it, um, but I just don't feel like at the moment I am going to be coming back to this book. Shadow and Bone, the first book in this series, I gave 3.5 out of 5 stars, so it was kind of a bit of an average series for me anyway, but this book just really brought it down um with my expectations for this series yeah I just really didn't enjoy it I also find both of the main characters Alina and Mal really annoying and really whiny I just don't like them together um Shadow and Bone was kind of tolerable because there weren't so many scenes of them um but in this book it just it doesn't work for me. However, I will just put it out there that Nikolai as a character, I really do like. If I am going to pick up this series again, it will literally just be for him. He was carrying this whole book on his back. Yeah, I really, really couldn't have got to 200 pages in if it weren't for him. He really just like sort of made me want to keep going to the point where I was just like, I felt bad for putting this book down, but I just... I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> as well as my sort of complaints and issues with the main characters, Alina and Mal, um, I did also struggle with this book because there wasn't very much happening with the plot. It was sort of just like a straight line of just like, you know, there's this going on, but it's not actually leading anywhere. Um, so yeah, it just felt very like bland to me and kind of a bit pointless with the amount of time that was taken um, in those 200 pages after this I guess main plot had happened or this catalyst had happened right at the start of the book. Overall I just didn't get on with this book um, but yeah like I said I may come back to the series because I do want to 
read Ruin and Rising and then read King of Scars but I don't know I might just end up looking online about you know what happens in the end of this trilogy so then I can read King of Scars I don't know <laughs> but anyway moving on from that on to a better read the next book that I read was The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller um hopefully I'm saying that right this was another five out of five stars for me I really enjoyed this book this is a fantasy standalone and this book has a really really good I guess you would call it friends to lovers romance um it's kind of friends to lovers on one side and then enemies to lovers on another side it's a bit weird to kind of explain so this book follows the main female protagonist Alessandra who is sick of being overlooked in her life she kind of feels that like she's living in her sister's shadow um and so she kind of likes to act out to kind of not necessarily get attention but just because she feels like nobody really sees her um so yeah she decides to put this plan in place to seduce the shadow king and then marry him kill him and take the kingdom for herself things end up getting in the way it turns out that there is more than just alessandra trying to kill the king so she ends up protecting him more than trying to kill him but yeah i can't say much more than that i'm just sort of paraphrasing what is written on the inside of this book but yeah just the friends to lovers slash enemies to lovers depending on which character's point of view you want to go from um it was executed really really well in my opinion another thing i would like to point out is i really enjoyed the kind of um characteristics and the plot behind the powers that the shadow king possesses so the shadow king Callias, um i really just liked the description and the like characteristics of his shadows um and sort of the way that they work and what happens with them and how it affects him um i don't want to give too much away but yeah i would definitely recommend picking up this book because it has a very interesting um overall plot to it um it's very comedic very funny alessandra is a very witty um main female protagonist she really she has a lot of personality but yeah so i would definitely recommend picking up this book it is a fantasy standalone and then the final book that i read in the month of april was heartstopper volume one which i also gave five out of five stars this is a graphic novel that follows nick and Charles as they kind of go through high school and they meet and it's just a really wholesome romance this was my first experience reading a graphic novel and now I just want to read more yeah I really just enjoyed this book um, and I'm really excited to read the other volumes that are already out as well as the ones that are yet to come out um so yeah I really enjoyed this book and if you haven't read a graphic novel before either or if you're looking for a new graphic novel series even though I know most people have read this book by now and the other volumes if you haven't I would definitely recommend it so yeah that is all of the books that I read in the month of April I hope you guys have enjoyed this video please comment below and let me know what books you read this month um, and if you enjoyed them so I hope all of you are staying safe and I will hopefully talk to you all again very soon bye guys